I think what the real news network is doing is uh, making a, an essential contribution to the revitalization of a, a functioning democracy that can really be a government of by and for the people, not just in words. Wall Street numbers were up on Monday after news of Barack Obama's infrastructure stimulus package and the proposed bailout of the big three U.S. automakers. The Dow Jones was up almost 300 points and flirted with 9,000, closing at 8,934.18. In an address on Saturday, the president-elect said his administration is going to act swiftly on a recovery plan and new stimulus package as soon as he is sworn in in January. I've asked my economic team to develop an economic recovery plan for both Wall Street and Main Street that will help save or create at least two and a half million jobs while rebuilding our infrastructure, improving our schools, reducing our dependence on oil, and saving billions of dollars. The package includes upgrading federal buildings to make them more energy efficient, the largest road and highway rebuilding program since the 1950s, modernizing and upgrading school buildings across the U.S., and upgrading both broadband internet service and access for all. It is unacceptable that the United States ranks 15th in the world in broadband adoption. Here in the country that invented the internet, every child should have the chance to get online. And they'll get that chance when I'm president because that's how we'll strengthen America's competitiveness in the world. But will this massive infrastructure rebuilding program be enough? We spoke to Doug Henwood, editor of the Left Business Observer. I think that uh, and the combination of uh, long uh, and short-term strategies, I think, seems very good. They're talking about doing things can be done very quickly, getting road projects done very quickly that states are ready to do, uh, maybe finding some way to get some cash into the hands of, of uh, middle and lower income uh, people. Uh, those things are good, but also uh, working on the long-term stuff. Uh, infrastructure is very good uh, for uh, long-term growth. So are, are all the schemes uh, for alternative energy and building refitting and that sort of thing. This is a lot of it's pretty labor-intensive work. Uh, can create good jobs if we uh, if we set it up correctly. So you know, it looks like um, what we need uh, for the short and medium term. He didn't talk specifically about aid to state and local governments and extending unemployment benefits, those sorts of things. Uh, which are also essential, uh, both economically and, and humanely, but uh, I think other Democrats are talking about that. So basically they're saying all the right things so far. On Sunday, Barack Obama was on NBC's Meet the Press, where he stressed that there were no quick fixes to the current economic crisis. This is a big problem, and uh, it's going to get worse, and that's why my number one priority coming in is making sure that we've got an economic recovery plan that is equal to the task. The cost of Obama's economic recovery plan is being estimated to be between 500 and 700 billion dollars, and some going as high as 1.2 trillion. Those are the numbers they're talking about: 500 to 700 billion. Uh, who knows? You know, 500. Uh, it was my, my start. Congress will probably add to it. Uh, it's not going to get smaller as it goes through Congress, I suspect. So, it I think can generate uh, some growth. I think it can arrest the kind of uh, collapse we've seen in some of the economic numbers the last um, uh, several weeks. I'm not sure it can generate, uh, at least in the medium term, some kind of uh, impressive prosperity and growth. Uh, I think the, there are a lot of really complicated structural problems with the U.S. economy. And uh, whether they're going to address those, those are tough to address. Uh, and what I'm thinking of in particular is the distribution of income, uh, the, uh, the massive concentration that's gone on at the very, very, very top of the society for the last 30 years. Uh, that's part of our problem. Uh, that is because the, 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 we have a, a system that depends upon high levels of, of mass consumption, uh, while at the same time that uh, mass consumption is being, or mass purchasing power is constrained by stagnant or falling wages. Uh, and if they're going to address that, the distribution of income, that is a very messy political thing to do. Uh, Wall Street, uh, big CEOs, uh, their ideologues in, in the press, uh, they're not going to take kindly to that sort of thing. Sunday night at a press conference, the president-elect discussed a potential auto industry bailout. Obama said that while a collapse of the industry was unacceptable, particularly at a time of economic turmoil and job losses across the country, it did not make sense to provide financial assistance without evidence the industry was committed to restructuring. I think that Congress is doing the exact right thing by uh, asking for a conditions-based uh, assistance package that holds the auto industry's feet to the fire, 
uh, gives them some short-term assistance, but also insists that that assistance leads to uh, some very difficult choices. The United States economy can't afford the loss of the auto sector, uh, but what exactly they mean by these conditions, I don't know. It probably means pretty serious wage cuts, the effective disappearance of the United Auto Workers as a political force. Yeah, they may survive in, 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 in name, but they're not going to survive as a political or economic force. Uh, they're going to see you know, movements, movements in their wages down to uh, non-union wage levels. Uh, I think we're going to see uh, some kind of debt restructuring. Some of the bondholders are going to take a hit. Uh, but the question is whether they have the skills to uh, uh, restructure and revive the American auto sector. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it seems like they don't. Sometimes it seems like the United States has just absolutely lost the ability to uh, manufacture anything. Uh, we can certainly design iPods uh, and uh, iMacs, but we cannot uh, necessarily manufacture an automobile or a drill press or any of those uh, other basic things that, uh, although they seem kind of old-fashioned, are still pretty essential to the economy. I think it's kind of amazing, though, that they're talking about all these conditions imposed in the auto sector, which are probably reasonable and probably necessary, and they, and, you know, they should also be required to make fuel-efficient and uh, environmentally friendly cars while they're at it. But uh, you know, that's for, what, $25, $50 billion? They get all these conditions? The financial sector is getting $700 billion and maybe more uh, with no conditions at all. And, and existing management is staying in place in most, in most cases. It's amazing uh, double standard uh, that the auto industry is expected to be put through the ringer uh, and uh, their workers suffer deep wage cuts. That's not being demanded of the financial sector. Nobody's talking about a, a financial sector SAR. Nobody's talking about oversight boards. Nobody's talking about conditionality. Uh, they've just gotten a blank check, and they're not doing a very good job with uh, what they've gotten so far. So it's, it's, it's a remarkable uh, uh, double standard of being applied uh, to, to these bailouts. With the hundreds of billions and even trillions of dollars that the U.S. federal government has invested in these giant corporations, why shouldn't they take control of these institutions? I think that's a very good idea. Why not take control? Because the private sector has not been doing a very good job of it. Uh, the financial sector is a, has screwed up massively. They've done a total, uh, made a total mess of it. Uh, so, yeah, why not nationalize parts of it? Why not uh, create new kinds of ownership models, uh, nonprofits, cooperatives, uh, community organizations running them? You know, there are all kinds of different experimental things we could do with the financial sector that's, of course, not being done. Why not uh, you know, give the workers a seat on the boards of, of the big auto companies? Why not make a kind of a joint venture between uh, the state and the workers? Uh, you know, again, private, uh, the private sector has not done a very good job of running it, so they, they can't claim uh, greater wisdom or greater efficiency uh, of, of, of private management in that case. We can't really go back to the status quo before all these crises hit. So yeah, why not take a plunge on some kind of new ownership model? Endless wars, abuse of powers, declining living standards, and the climate change crisis. The stakes couldn't be greater in the U.S. And with your help, we're moving our news operation to Washington, D.C., where we'll focus on money and corruption. For example, big oil and arms companies shape American economic and foreign policy with far-reaching effects on the lives of ordinary people. With allies in government, trade unions, the media, and in think tanks, they're a hidden hand that controls the commanding heights of American politics. Taking on the industrial military complex is what real change requires. Even former presidents and high administration officials have said so. But corporate television news treats such positions as marginal. Uncompromising journalism requires questioning assumption, interrogating structures of wealth and power. Corporate TV news just won't do it. Only a news organization that's truly independent can tackle such issues with courage and tenacity. And we'll take on corporate TV news live. You'll watch TV news with our panel of writers, journalists, scientists, and historians. You'll be able to join in by phone, webcam, chat. Together, we'll discuss and debate what's the real story and take on the myth and the propaganda. But this is only possible if you support us now. We need to prove that a viewer-funded model works. So if you want the real news, we need you now. Please click on the donate button and give generously. Now's the time to decide if you want the real news to thrive. Your tax-deductible donation makes it possible. Please contribute at therealnews.com.